Since Halloween is slowly approaching, I got myself a pumpkin, emptied its guts and tried carving its a more or less scary looking face. But simply placing small tea lights inside it and be done with it is certainly not exciting enough for me as an electronics enthusiast. That is why I got myself this so called ultrasonic mist maker, which after powering it with 24 volts and placing it inside a container with water, does create some intriguing looking mists. And by adding this effect to my pumpkin, it looks a lot more spooky. Now you can get such an ultrasonic mist maker. Wait a minute, I already produced this video for Halloween 2017, in which I not only explained how such a device works, but also terribly failed at creating a DIY version and basically told everyone to just buy the commercial solution. So why is an ultrasonic mist maker once again the subject of attention? Well, the reason is that I recently found a new ultrasonic mist maker circuit that not only works flawlessly as well, but more importantly does not hide its circuitry, like other products do. So in this video, let's reverse engineer this new mist maker circuit in order to create our own super simple DIY version, which this time will turn out as a success. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. One piece of news about them. JLC PCB has now widely cut their prices for 1 to 6 layer PCBs, batch PCBs and stencils. Upload your Gerber files to order high quality PCBs for ridiculously low prices. To start off, let's solder wires to the voltage input pins of the circuit, hook up the piezoelectric disc and connect the circuit to 12V power. As you can see here in the standby state, this circuit only draws around 9mA and obviously it does not create the mist while the disc is placed in water. But by pressing the circuit's tactile switch once, the current flow fires up to 180mA and the piezoelectric disc does spit out the mist when correctly positioned inside the water. But make sure that the disc does not oscillate when being dry, because it seems to permanently damage it. Now granted, the mist effect of this new circuit is not as spectacular as the effect of the old circuit from a year ago. But then again, this new circuit, in comparison to the old one, draws less power, costs less, does not make such a mess and most importantly, it uses a resonance frequency of only 113 kHz instead of 1.7 MHz, which is way easier to achieve. But let's firstly inspect the ICs and components on the PCB to understand how the circuit works. The first IC is a MC34063, which is a step up slash down switching regulator. In combination with a couple of passive complementary components and most importantly a Schottky diode and an inductor on the other side, it turns the 3.7V to 12V input voltage into a constant 28V output voltage. This voltage is then stepped down to 5V through the 78L05 linear voltage regulator in order to supply the last IC whose label was unfortunately scraped off. But after probing all of its pins, it seems like its only function is outputting a PWM signal with a frequency of 105 kHz as soon as the tactile switch is pushed. Since this frequency is not quite the 113 kHz resonance frequency the disc ideally requires, I came to the conclusion that the IC is a cheap Chinese microcontroller whose timer was not able to get closer to the resonance frequency. It could be for example a PMS 150C with a 16-bit timer that you can get for staggeringly low 3.5 cents. 
But nevertheless, this PWM signal controls the gates of a FQD 2N60C and channel MOSFET that with its source is connected to ground. Its drain however is connected to 100 nanofarad capacitor, a 328 microhenry inductor and the piezoelectric disc like it shown in this schematic. This part of the circuit basically creates an oscillation for the piezoelectric disc, which after checking its waveform on the oscilloscope, seems to feature a maximum of 36 volts and a minimum of minus 78 volts which apparently is suitable to create the mist through mechanical vibrations of the disc. And just like that we are familiar with the functional principle of the commercial solution and we learned that our DIY solution basically only needs to be able to create an alternating current flow through the disc near its resonance frequency. For prototyping I utilized my function generator to create the 113 kHz square wave voltage. Now believe it or not, beside the signal parts we only require those two components. The first one is a TC4428 dual MOSFET driver and the second one is a 470 nanofarad capacitor to decouple the IC. Now the output of the MOSFET driver basically consists of two MOSFETs that either pull the output high or low. And since we got two outputs whose state is also inverted, we can basically abuse this IC as a crude H bridge to let the alternating current flow. So I connected the IC to the power, signal and disc like it shown in this schematic and fired up my 15 volts power source. As you can see, the disc does create the mist, but not a whole lot of it. The reason is that our oscillation voltage only lies between plus minus 17 volts, much less than before. And increasing the input voltage is only possible up to 18 volts, since that is the limit of the IC. So for your quick mist fix, this circuit works just fine. But for a bit more power, we can use the MOSFET driver properly with a MOSFET in order to recreate the oscillator circuit that was featured in the commercial solution. I went with a 220 microhenry inductor and 100 nanofarad capacitor. And as you can see, after powering the circuit with 15 volts, the disc starts spitting out a bit more mist. And by having a look at the voltage once again on the oscilloscope, we can see a more powerful oscillation with peaks of plus 18 and minus 40 volts. And of course, with this MOSFET circuit, we can also easily increase the voltage to a higher value. To complete the circuit, I built up a 555 timer circuit in order to create the 113 kHz signal without the function generator and also got rid of the MOSFET driver IC, since the NE555 features enough output power to handle that on its own. And after I did a final test with the circuits, it was time to remove all of the components from the breadboards and solder them more permanently onto a piece of perfboard according to my finalized schematic. In case you want to recreate this DIY route, then you can find the schematic along with pictures of my soldered circuits as a reference and more information in the video description. And as soon as my circuit was complete, I fine tuned the oscillator to the resonance frequency and finally placed the whole circuit inside my pumpkin. And with that being done, I wish you a spooky Halloween and if you enjoyed this video, then as always don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative! and I will see you next time.